the ideal gas equation allows us to relate the concepts of the combined gas law and the concept of the mole. And you'll see in the ideal gas equation we have P, V, and T, three of the same terms we had in the combined gas law. And now what we're going to see is the introduction of this, the mole. And we know from the previous lesson we had P, V over T, this term. We had P1, V1 over T1 equals P2, V2 over T2. Thanks to the work of some brilliant scientists and some fuzzy math, we, uh, we, we have something called R, the universal gas constant, which is what allows us to relate this term to the concept of a mole, N. By multiplying uh, N, the mole number, by this factor R, the universal gas constant, it doesn't matter what the gas, the R value is the same, we can relate moles to PV over T. In effect, combining the concept of a mole with the concept of the combined gas law. Why is it important? What does it allow us to do? Well, it allows us to take, and I'm going to take these three equations where I've solved for each of the three variables, the P, the V, and the T. And I'm going to write over the top of that equal sign a proportionality sign. So it allows us to take a look at whether these terms are what we call directly or inversely proportional. And you look at, uh, we'll use the, the first one as an example, our term P. P is technically over 1. P is in the numerator, pressure. So if it's P over 1, it's proportional to T over V. Since P and T are both numerators, that they are directly proportional to one another. What this means is that if I hold V, or volume constant, and I increase temperature, pressure increases. Since they are both in the numerator, if I hold volume constant and increase temperature, pressure will go up. We look at volume. Volume is in the denominator. Pressure is in the numerator. That means these two terms are inversely proportional. In other words, if I increase the denominator volume while holding temperature constant, by increasing the denominator, the overall P, pressure, will go down. The magnitude of a fraction decreases as the denominator increases. So pressure and volume are inversely proportional. As volume increases, pressure decreases. When we solve for volume, we see that volume and temperature are both in, in the numerator. That means if we hold pressure constant and increase temperature, we will increase volume. Uh, a good example of this, if we're holding pressure constant and increasing temperature, this is like a balloon. In a balloon, the balloon can expand, which means the volume can change, and the pressure will stay the same. If we heated up a balloon, the balloon would expand. The gas inside the balloon would expand. You'd see the balloon get bigger. If you cool it down, the gas inside the balloon will contract, uh, and the balloon will get smaller. So as temperature increases, volume increases uh, at constant pressure, those two terms are directly proportional. P is in the denominator. That means at constant temperature, if I increase the pressure, I will shrink the volume. Hopefully that makes sense. At a constant temperature, when pressure goes up, that means I'm, I'm compressing the system, pushing in on the system more, that will shrink the volume. The last one's probably the toughest uh, to understand. Uh, temperature, pressure, and volume, when we solve for T, T is uh, directly proportional to both pressure and volume. What this means is at constant volume, if you increase the pressure on a system, temperature will go up. Okay, there's an effect on the kinetic energy, the speed of the particles. At a constant pressure, if you increase the volume, that must mean temperature is going up. Okay, in order for that volume to go up, it would mean you're experiencing a temperature increase. Now, in order to 
uh, make this even clearer, I'm going to teach you a little trick. If we write the terms T, T, and V in alphabetical order, and you can do this when you get your test. So it's, it's, it's a little trick to help you uh, keep track of how these terms are related. Write them in alphabetical order, P, T, and V. Put your finger on the one you want to hold constant. Change the one you want to change, and you'll see the effect it has on the third. So let's put our finger on the T. And you can do this right on the, uh, on the table. Put your finger on the T, and you're going to turn your entire packet. I'm going to raise the pressure, make pressure go up. Look what happens to volume. Volume goes down. So at constant temperature, if I increase pressure, the volume will shrink. Do the same thing. Put your finger on T. Now we're going to increase the volume. If I increase volume at constant temperature, the pressure goes down. It's one of the things we said that should make sense. I've increased the pressure. I've given the gas more room. Or I've increased the volume. I've given the gas more room. That means lower pressure. So we go back. Let's put our finger on the P. Let's hold pressure constant. This one's a little tougher for me. I can't turn this thing on the P. I can only do it on the middle, on T. But if I were to now raise temperature at constant pressure, this volume is attached to it. It goes up with it. That means at constant pressure, the pressure remains the same, and I increase the temperature, the volume will increase. That's the balloon example. If I decrease the volume at constant pressure, Temperature goes down with it. Okay, at constant pressure, if volume decreases, temperature must be decreasing. That's the explanation. So this is just a little way, a little trick for showing you what happens uh, when you keep one variable constant, change the other, the effect it has on the third. You can always do this. Just write the terms in alphabetical order. Put your finger on the one you want to hold constant, and then turn it to change the one variable you want to, and you'll see the effect on the third. Okay, if uh, little a, b, and c down here, just to give you a quick summary again, make sure it all sounds logical, and then we'll put this uh, into effect as we start doing the word problems in class.